Well, it's Christmas week, so we're not doing a whole lot of work on the boat, but we did decide to take the girls down to New Orleans just to see the original Cafe Du Monde. We parked near the Mississippi River and just walked on up uh, Decatur Street, enjoying the sights and sounds before we ultimately got there. The line was really long to get in, but turned out it only took about 15 or 20 minutes to get there, so we clipped the camera onto the front of the baby stroller and let McKinley, uh, I don't know, be a star for a few minutes, which she seemed to enjoy. But we placed an order for uh, two orders of beignets, a hot chocolate for Chastity, had a glass of milk uh, for McKinley, Deb had her soft drink, um, and uh, you know, it was kind of neat. That it took a little while for the service to come out, but uh, the place was completely packed and crowded, so it certainly understand why. Um, the beignets are crazy. They are so covered in powdered sugar. I mean, after, after you eat the three that are on the plate, there's just probably another half pound of just powdered sugar sitting there. Chastity was enjoying her beignets. She was really looking forward to this. We were originally just gonna go with the two of us, but um, because we decided to go to the original one, we all decided to take the, take the trip and run on downtown. Um, you'll notice both Chastity and Deb in the video are constantly brushing their shirts off just because every bite um, is a cloud of powdered sugar. <laughs> Chastity's enjoying her hot chocolate. They also serve Café au lait, which is a chicory-based coffee. I'm not a big fan of it, but that's their specialty. Um, even the baby had a little bit of the beignets and seemed to enjoy them quite a bit, other than the powdered sugar on her hand that would make a paste-like substance. She kept putting her hand up to have it washed off. So after our beignets, we were over uh, right across the street from Jackson Square. Um, this is a little park right, uh, right the Mississippi River is right beyond those steps. But they were setting up out here for a uh, local st uh, set of street performers. One of the guys is actually on America's Got Talent. Um, you can kind of see him um, right on the edge of the steps. He's, he's doing uh, push-ups with his feet up on the steps. But it's a phenomenal uh, act. They do a little bit of uh, you know, break dancing and whatnot, and certainly entertaining with the crowd. So it's always a good time. We've seen them down on Bourbon Street in the evenings. Apparently during the day they set up right here. So as we were talking about this and I was explaining it to Chastity, I saw this dude come walking by in this great green Christmas suit. I had to get a little footage of that. Check out how limber one of these performers was. Unreal. We had been explaining to Chastity what Mardi Gras was, because she actually has off for a day at uh, Mardi Gras on Fat Tuesday. So we found a local tour that we thought would be really interesting and help illustrate a little bit about what it's all about. We are in Mardi Gras world, which is the warehouse where they make the floats and store them to Mardi Gras. Pretty amazing stuff. I'm walking here, looking behind me, you can see this. All these heads in my mouth. It's unreal. Kick that dude out here. Hold real still. What is that? You want to go over and get a picture by the chef? Psycho chef. All of that was just walking in the entrance. So you start in the gift shop where you, where you pay your admission and Chastity found a little walking alligator. Uh, McKinley was pretty intrigued by the big jester head there. And then we all um, took our turns trying on some cute little masks uh, for Mardi Gras. Now, even the baby got into it here. As the tour starts, you start off in a little theater. They show you about a 15 minute video about Mardi Gras and then we had an opportunity to try on some different uh, Mardi Gras costumes. That's actually Chastity with that giant head on. So from here we actually got to go in and see how they prepare the work. This guy is taking blocks of styrofoam and starting to carve the shape he wants. Each workstation has a different uh, piece on it. They make them out of styrofoam and then they cover them completely in paper mache. So these two women are actually covering a styrofoam build with paper mache. It gives it a smooth finish that they can paint white and it becomes the frame for the next part. Uh, uh, which is painting. Each uh, artist has this sketch. This is going to be for one of the Orpheus crews. That's what the character is going to look like and then you can see the styrofoam build for it. And obviously they still have to paper mache it, paint it white, um, and then they start to do the artistry work on it. The interesting thing is they recycle it. That's what it was the, the year the prior. The stuff you just see as you walk through is truly amazing. Just to give you an idea how big these things are, to put this in perspective, there's a guy. I mean look how huge these things are. As we move forward, we also got to see how they used to build the props out of layers of meshed cardboard back and forth, and now they do it with uh, thin styrofoam. It's kind of a neat way to see how they used to do it versus how they do now. And then as we walk around the corner again, there's just a ton more props. You know, all these cupcakes and ice cream cones on the right, uh, on the left, I mean, and all down here on the right were all these, um, these additional statues. 
And you can see each artist has their own little workstation where they work on their particular items. Uh, you know, you got a scary looking rat and a, you know, a skeleton and this, uh, whatever the heck that was, this cave baby thing that's uh, in mid-stage of getting painted. And then all of these items that are now prepped and ready for the painting station, you know, the monster, the fish. Um, we've got a king over here that's, uh, you know, it looks like they got the face and the feet painted, but the rest of it's still ready to go. And jellyfish, whatever that thing is, a bunch of skulls. Just really is amazing what they had in From here. From the artist station, we actually went into the warehouse. And just to give you an idea of how large this is, I mean, this thing just goes on and on and on. Um, and you can see all of these statues. The interesting thing is Mardi Gras World actually owns these and they rent them to the crew. They don't sell them. Um, they were actually telling us right here that they make some of these props for Disney's and casinos. Uh, the detail here was truly amazing and as I worked closer to this I could actually see this piece of tape and it said uh, Orf 16. One of the big super crews is the crew of Orpheus so I suspect this is going to be one of theirs this year. But the detail was phenomenal. So we got a bit of history around the way this works. So Mardi Gras World actually builds these uh, trailers um, and sells them. They cost about $50,000. And then the crews that, uh, that do the parades, they will come back to Mardi Gras World and pay them to outfit them. It costs them between five and $10,000 per trailer. Each crew has to have between 14 and 28 floats in order to be a crew. So at minimum, they have to have 14 of these things, at maximum 28. Uh, really was kind of interesting that it takes. So as we walk through here, we can see how, um, you know, they had all these uh, segments of these sort of flower petals, and they were putting them on the sides of each of the uh, each of the Mardi Gras trailers themselves. Uh, when they're put on there, they look truly beautiful. I think the theme for this was like magical, mystical, something or other, and I suppose they're going to be putting some of those um, unique looking creatures on the front of these trailers as well. A lot of these floats will hold about 30 to 40 riders themselves. Um, this float, as you can see, is pretty large, and that little door right there where it was green and right there to the, to the edge of the blue striped wall, there's actually two restrooms on this as well. So I went to the next float to try and show you something. If you notice, see all these hooks on the walls? That's where they actually hang beads and throws right there, and all the crew members can reach down easily and grab them and throw them out uh, to the crowd. Riders have to pay for their own throws, and they pay for the privilege of being in a crew. Uh, somewhere between $500 and $1,000 a year. Every rider has to be tethered in. That's also one of the rules. Uh, by law, any, any rider on a float also has to have a mask on so that people don't know who it is. So the interesting thing is on the day of the parade, they actually close these doors, they latch them, they padlock them, and then they screw them shut. So the riders are truly on the floats until the parade is over. That can be anywhere between six and nine hours on average. Um, and again, you can see this, these floats are just truly amazing. And these aren't even finished yet. They're still in the works. The construction on these are kind of a twin high beam uh, frame, and you notice they have solid tires so there's no flats during a parade. Our tour guide was sharing with us one of the tricks some of the large super crews use so that they can have a bigger parade than the 28th that the limited there is. So a float is considered a tractor pulling a device. If a tractor can pull more than one, they can count it as a single. So the largest one they've built were nine cars long. It was over 360 feet pulled by a single tractor. Meet the Bacchus crew, Miss Kong and King Kong. Every year as the Bacchus parade passes, uh, viewers will throw their own beads at King Kong and Mrs. Kong. Uh, again, all around the warehouse is just unbelievable props with amazing detail. And where we are now is where some of the crews actually hold one of their big dances or balls. Uh, and again, just as, as I've looked around, I continue to see all kinds of interesting things. It was about a five foot Ray Charles head, the parrot. I saw a chef that looked a bit like the old Kipps Big Boy type of logo. Um, and, and just the more you walk around, the more you see interesting things. Uh, you know, I saw this court jester holding a jester on a wand. I thought that one was kind of interesting. And then I saw what I thought were mermaids, but nope, a couple of naked things. I don't know what they were. You know, a ballerina and whatever that thing is in red, just uh, mermaids. I mean, it was truly amazing how many things there were. There was this monster that did then some touch-up work, but it was like a three-headed, uh, I don't know, tigers or something? I'm not sure what it was. Uh, really interesting. This thing was this thing was monstrous. I mean, because I'm, I'm walking, and it's, uh, you know, it's a good twice as tall as I am, likely. Um, you know, everything from this rainbowed arch to angels to buildings from New York. Uh, 
you know, the, if you can see these little statues on the left there, they have openings in them so you can stand and put your face behind them. But, you know, the amount of creativity in each of these items was phenomenal with the themes, right? So a mermaid and a fishing boat and, you know, we're in Louisiana, so how about an airboat for a gator hunter? Um, you know, these theatrical faces and uh, a pirate back there it looked kind of like the Captain Morgan pirate. And then something caught my eye way back there in the back. I don't know, is that is that a John Lennon? I don't know who that was. Um, but really interesting stuff. I mean, baseball players and some of the Saints, just, it was unreal how much they had done in here. Most of them are paper mache, some are truly fiberglass molds as well. So if they're mass producing, they do a fiberglass mold instead. All in all, it was a great day in New Orleans. So we wanna pause here and wish you a very Merry Christmas, and we'll be back on our regular boat projects next week. If you like the channel and you'd like to get updates each week as we post new videos, please click on the red subscribe button. If you think others would enjoy the video, please click on the like button in the bottom right hand corner. Thanks everybody.